Ever wanted to make a fortress in the blink of an eye? Or learn how to take beautiful photos? Here's 39 Minecraft tricks that only pros do. Pros are always trying to take the best photos. Here's some simple tips and tricks. Turn your FOV down to around 30. This makes much less distortion and keeps the focus on the subject. And make sure to have a little something interesting in the background and foreground, as long as it isn't distracting from the subject. Get the most out of your tools by using them efficiently. With a pickaxe, you need to dig at its maximum range. This gives you enough space to walk forward and dig without stopping, and lets you break blocks faster than you would otherwise. Want to make a huge tower that's near unbreakable? Here's a super fast way of doing it. Make the outline of your tower at the height you want the tower to be. Put lava pouring off the sides, and then pour water from atop that. Remove the water, and you've got a near impenetrable fortress. You need to know where you're digging, and what you want out of it before starting your journey. If you want diamonds, consult this chart. It shows you that diamonds start generating at Y16, and get more and more common the further down you go, with the most appearing right at the bottom of the world. Use ravines! It's a trick that all pros know because you don't need to waste time digging a hole when one has already been made for you. There's a greater chance of getting lost, sure, but you can dive right down and find exposed rare ones without using a pickaxe once. Get efficient! Pros love efficiency, and if your pick doesn't have mending or unbreaking, then they'll love it too. Have a central hub with your chest where you start mining from, then mine out in branches, three blocks apart from each other. Most ore veins are big enough that those branches will expose them as you mine. You might have heard that one before, but pros know about new tech that recently got added to the game. Use a trapdoor to force yourself to crawl into a one block space. Now you only need to mine that one block space in front of you, crawling forward as you go. It's way easier and faster. Climb mountains with speed by using water buckets to scale cliffs. You can pour water many blocks above your head and climb up that rather than digging and jumping your way up there. You can use water buckets to break your fall, but if you're in the nether and water isn't available, use powdered snow instead. In fact, if you lay powdered snow beforehand and lay a carpet over it, you can drop from any distance and you'll be completely safe. All the pros know that if you need dry sponge in a hurry, just hop into the nether and place it down. It dries instantly, way faster than using a furnace. Strongholds almost always have a massive library, so don't bother going through the trouble of making them yourself. If you want an enchanting table, just find a stronghold, and you can set it right there. Need water, but all you have is a wet sponge? Get the water from the sponge by heating it in the furnace. Then replace the fuel with a bucket, so when the sponge is dry, the bucket is filled with water. Get a pumpkin or melon farm and use that to get emeralds like a pro. The villagers love that stuff and will give you an emerald for pretty cheap. You can then use those emeralds to buy all sorts of things in return. It's so easy to get lost in the caves and tunnels, and making signs and landmarks every few steps can be tiresome. Just place torches on the right side as you walk. Then when you want to go back, keep the torches on the left side and you'll go straight back the way you came. Press F3 to know if there's a bastion nearby like a pro. A debug screen shows how many entities are on screen, but this includes entities that are hidden behind walls. If you make your FOV real small and look around in the nether, a high number of entities clustered together will probably be a bastion. Use powder snow to wall jump your way up a cliff. This works great in the nether, where water isn't available to scale cliffs. To so have a bucket of powdered snow ready, you can place the snow against the wall, hop off it, and to mid jump, you can scoop it back into a bucket and then place it again higher up. Keep going until you reach the top. If you need to find lush caves, look for azalea trees. These trees are easy to spot with their weird windswept look, and they indicate that there is a lush cave directly below. So get digging! You don't need a furnace or smoker to cook your food? Not anymore, at least. As with a campfire, you can cook four pieces of food at once, basically for free. Put a hay bale underneath the campfire to give it a smoky flavor. Pros know to never use lava to get rid of your items. It's dangerous and there's no second chances. Instead, use a cactus. Make a cross-shaped hole, cover it, put a trapdoor above and a button above that. Now you can throw your items on the trapdoor. If you throw the wrong item, you can just pick it up again. Then when you're ready, press the button and watch the items get deleted by a cactus. Hauling around a bunch of potions can fill up your inventory real quick. So instead, use arrows. They can stack. And if you move forward fast enough and look slightly up, you can hit yourself with your own arrow. You get the same effect while not wasting space with potions. Getting into and out of buildings can be done at high speed and with no trace left behind using an ender pearl. Run to the wall and throw the pearl down at the corner where the wall and floor meet. Keep moving forward and you'll get to the other side. Pros use entity cramming for a lot of things. This is the act of putting way too many entities in the same single block space. Anything in there starts dying. And if you put a hopper beneath that, it's a very easy easy way to farm beef without huge contraptions. Are villager trades unfair to you? Then break the lectern, smash it to pieces, and then put a new one in. A villager loses their job and has to reapply, and when they do that, they get whole new trades. Once you like a trade, make the trade and it will get locked in permanently for that villager. Have you got a pet zombie or skeleton? Pros know the best way to keep your undead army alive is by giving them hats. This blocks out the sunlight so they don't burn, even in a desert. Want to break tough walls? Well, pros know that if you grow a mushroom using bone meal, it will literally delete almost any block it grows
throws into. Make sure it's not exposed to the sun, though. The fastest way to make a big hole in the ground is a TNT duplicator. Keep this design high above the ground because it's going to be dropping TNT down and blowing up everything below it until you tell it to stop. Get Fortune on all of your tools as soon as you can. The Fortune 3 hoe can get five potatoes from a single plant. Flints can come from every block of gravel, and diamonds are plentiful wherever you go. You're wasting resources the longer you don't have Fortune 3. Fill your pool instantly by using this pro strat using ICE towers and weird physics. Basically, two water source blocks with a gap between them turns that gap into a source block. So if you line an area with ice block towers with a space between them on two sides, then change them to water, they will fill the pool entirely with source blocks almost instantly. Respawning in the nether needs a respawn anchor, but it only has a certain amount of charge. It used to be that you had to manually recharge the anchor, but now you can simply dispense glowstone into it, and it will work. Make this setup filled with as much glowstone as you can get, and you can die a hundred times and not lose your respawn. You might use TNT to blow a hole in the ground, but that doesn't work underwater, unless you use this cool trick. Set a TNT block down, then put a gravity block like sand on top of it. When activated, the TNT doesn't count as a block anymore, and the sand will fall into it, making the game think the TNT isn't underwater at all. If it's not underwater, it can destroy terrain just fine. Waterlogging is amazing, because pros know how to exploit it. Because TNT doesn't work underwater, that means if your chest is waterlogged, it counts as underwater, and so is immune to explosions. Honey blocks are slightly smaller than regular blocks, and pros have learned that you can use them for all sorts of things. Put them in a wall and you can climb a sheer rock face like a mountain goat. Surround a water column and you can still use the water without exposing it to the world. Don't waste your bone meal on sea pickles. Pros know that you should only use bone meal when you have your sea pickle on a living coral block. Then when you use the bone meal, more and more will show up around you. Keep your mobs in check while maintaining your aesthetic. Do you hate the look of fences or trapdoors? Simply cover the floor of your pen in honey, and you can then use any block at all to act as a fence. The honey makes sure the mobs won't jump out. It also works on you though, so be careful. A lot of pros do sick speedruns, and one of the best ways to speedrun the ender dragon is to kill it with beds. But making a bed can take time, so why not just steal them from the local village? You're a dragon slayer. You need it more than they do. Protect your villagers. If you rely on them for trades, then they deserve the best protection. And sometimes a golem isn't enough. Simply dispense armor upon them, and they will wear it, including those with thorn enchantments. Let your villagers get zombified. When they trade with you, they set the prices and will give you discounts if they like you. The best way to get one on your side is to cure them of zombification. You can even do this multiple times for dirt cheap prices. Snow and powdered snow look almost identical, but pros can tell the difference. Powdered snow will never have an extra layer of snow on top, plus they have a slightly different texture to them, showing more varied shades of white and blue. If you're overwhelmed with hostile mobs, just use an elytra and some rockets. If you fly high up enough, the mobs will reach the despawn range and disappear! Being replaced with new mobs that won't know you're there and might be a lot easier to handle. Oh wait, I forgot my elytra at home. Quick, subscribe before I die!